got a wrong number. trying to tell you, you got it wrong. I'm doing the telling, Pete. I didn't crack to the clerk. Your name's not Johnson. Listen, whoever you are. I'm your one chance to get out from under. 300 grand, a clean getaway, out of the country. Who is this? If you're interested, come to room 302, Baker Hotel, 10 o'clock tonight. Hey, wait a minute. No change, eh, Pete? Still jumpy. That was a sucker move, burning down your boss. You had him all wrong. He never crossed you. But you're a guy who shoots first and thinks afterward. In your spot, I'd almost choose the cops. Even if it is a first-degree murder rap. It's lucky I spotted you. What's so lucky about being dead? I'm going to take care of a guy just a little too smart. Take off the mask. Come on, take it off. I don't like games. What makes a two-bit heel like you think a heater would give an edge over me? I ought to ram it down your throat. What's waiting for you, Harris? The chair? The gas chamber? Or just a rope? How do I know that line you handed me on the phone's on the level? Your voice don't even sound the same. Neither will yours when you put on a mask. Who else figures in it besides me? You ask too many questions. And I'm not getting any answers. I'd like to know who I work with, when we make a split, and who I take my orders from. Get out of here. All right, I'll get out. A fat choice you're giving me. You know the bind I'm in. Take it or leave it. You said 300 grand for my end. At least, free and clear. Only you do it my way. Nobody sees the others without a mask, even when we make the split. And I decide where and when that takes place. That makes it all foolproof. OK. You got yourself a boy. Now what? Stay in your room. Keep out of sight till I call you. Do a little thinking next time before you use it. Okay. Don't get any wrong ideas about me. I don't shove around this easy. I'll give you a chance to show me how hot you are on the job. Three-time loser, Tony. Not yet, I ain't. 
The police know you drove the getaway car. This time it's life and no chance of parole. This time, Tony, you go up for life under the Habitual Criminal Act with no chance of parole. You don't have to tell me the score. And it's a deal? Okay. But no dames, understand? No dames. And look, friend. If you don't like it, don't knock it. you think I can't go on doing all right? If I can spot you back of those trick cheaters, so can the cops. This job you're talking about, I said I'd listen. You're a cop killer. You killed one on that last deal. I don't like heroes. You can tell that to the warden when they burn you. So I'm still listening. Sorry, lady, I didn't see you. Units, stand by. A 117. Attention, all units. A 117. Here's a description of the suspects involved in the armed robbery of the Southwest Bank. Three men, masked, wearing identical coveralls. They are driving a light delivery car belonging to the Western Wholesale Florists. Use extreme caution. All are armed. to control two on that 117 we have the suspect florist struck 20th and jackson say what is this put your hands in the back of your neck and come on out come on come on get out you guys nuts shut up you in there come on out one at a time with your hands in the air all right you if your pals have any ideas you'd better start talking you're gonna open it open what you're crazy there's nothing in there but flowers 
soul from it. Where'd you drop them off? Come on, talk! Roll 300 miles. They ain't dropped us by now. They'll never get us. What do we make the split? The split's what I'm gonna talk about. Four kings. A pat hand. That's just what we're holding. Hang on to those cards. I've got everything covered, but in case something does go wrong and I can't make the payoff myself, the cards will identify you to whoever I send with the money. Say that again. We'll cut up the money when I think it's had time enough to cool off. Right now is good enough for me. Let's cut this horsing around. How far do you think you'd get with hot money? Every cop in the state's out looking for us. I'll take my I chance. I told you the mask stays on. Sure, you told us. It's a pat hand only because nobody can rat on you. You can't even rat on each other, because you've never seen each other without those masks. I made you cop-proof and stool-pigeon-proof, and it's going to stay that way. Talk to money. All right. I got one of these for each of you. With enough money to keep you comfortable while you're waiting, but not enough to get you into trouble. 300 G's is coming to me. I can stand a little trouble. Make up your mind. Which way is it going to be? You'll find tickets for where you're going. They're each going to a different foreign country. Stay there till I wire you where and when to come. And keep those masks. You'll be wearing them at the payoff. This is where you get off. Hit that buzzer. Open the door. Jump. I'll tell you when. It's odd that you'd stop at that florist next to the bank twice in the same morning. Once was all I was there. Then the woman who identified you was a liar. No, she's telling the truth. I did bump into Then the other witnesses who swear your truck was the getaway car, they're telling the truth, too? They're wrong if they say I had anything to do with the robbery. You want me to believe there was a duplicate truck? I wouldn't know. I wasn't there. You were framed, then, is that it? Yeah. In that year you spent in the pen, did anyone frame you on that rap? Ask the captain here. He was the arresting officer. A real model citizen. Look. Just because I got in a jam over a gambling bet doesn't make me a bank robber. Oh, the boy wants pity. What about the truck? <laughs> if I knew the answer to that, I wouldn't be here now. How's this for an answer? There was no other truck. Listen, I... Mr. Andrews here with the insurance company. He's willing to give you a break, aren't you, Scott? He knows we are. Same questions, same answers. You can save your breath. It's my job, Joe. After all, we've got to make good the loss. In fact, we're willing to pay out as much as 25% of the money as a reward. That's 300,000 for a lead, Joe. You're an industrial engineer, aren't you? I never graduated. That's right. Left school to enlist with the engineers. Pretty good soldier, too. Bronze star, purple heart. Try and buy a cup of coffee with him. Came back, resume his studies at night. Why? Why, I ask myself, would a man with such training want to take a job outside his line? I set up a touch for over a million dollars, that's why. I got the job through the probation officer. You can ask him. Mr. Collins, did I ever give you any trouble when I work for you? No, Joe, not at all. But I'm afraid I've got to let you go now. Nothing personal, you understand. It's just that, well, we sell to a lot of very conservative people. You know how it is. Yeah, I know how it is. Ah, uh, Sergeant. See that Mr. Collins gets back. Uh, I'll go along with him. Some questions I want to ask. All right, Rolf, you want it the hard way. I can fix that, too. You've got 20 years staring you right in the face. What do you want me to say, that I did it? Why don't you go ahead, Mr. Martin? 
You got a big day tomorrow. The boys will help me keep Rolf company. What do you think, McBride? I think you left him to me and the boys that have his confession on your desk the first thing in the morning. We'll be back after him first thing in the morning. Got visitors again, Rolf. Come on, move. McBride. We've got to turn him loose. The upstate police found a duplicate flyer struck half an hour ago. It was inside an abandoned moving van. Still doesn't clear Rolf in my book. His part of the job could have been to use his truck as a blind. To draw us away from the real getaway car. It could have been anything. Just give me a little more time. I'll sweat it out of him. Forget it, McBride. I've checked every movie he's made. He's clean. All right, Rolf. You can go. Sorry we had to detain you. You're sorry. These things happen. Thanks. For nothing. Go on, beat it. Maybe you didn't hear what I said. I said for nothing. Extra! Extra! What do you read? All about the big bank stick up. Extra! Get the latest news on the big bank stick up. Ex con drilled on the million dollar grab. Get the latest news on the... Hey! That's him! That's the guy! You gotta do it, Rick. You don't understand, Rick. I, I know this spot you're in, Rick, but you gotta help Joe. Rick. Rick! Hiya, Joe. Hi, Eddie. Get you something? Yeah, two things. A cup of coffee and that information you promised me. It's like I told you. The first one is easy. Listen, Eddie. I gotta know who set me into this little deal. Did you ask him? You're leading with your chin, Joe. <laughs> so I'm leading with my chin. What have I got to lose? Look, Eddie, it's been three weeks. No job, no angle, nothing. Hey, okay, okay. Take it easy, I'm on your side. I'll get you another cup of coffee. You come back tonight. Or I'll close in time.
Your brother says you're in trouble, Jim. I gotta find a way to clear myself. Sometimes it's tough, Joe. Sometimes it's too tough. Look, I want to know who framed me. Wasn't anyone local, that's for sure. Any ideas? Maybe. Might be why Pete Harris beat it to Mexico. Pete Harris? Where in Mexico? Tijuana. Look from where that dice roll is a real sucker for a crap game. Anything else? Kind of dark, got real weird eyes. He won't have any trouble finding him with the cigarettes he smokes. Just follow the chain. Much obliged. Good luck, Joe. Take it easy, Joe. Thanks, kid. That's the guy that saved your life on Iwo Jima, huh? I buy him. the name of dear senor. If you're looking for a good time, I know all the best places in Tijuana. As long as there's a dice table there. Oh, but gambling is illegal. Yeah. But uh, like in the States, senor, there are some things the law does not know. I will show you where it's a nice game of chance. Si, senor, but I lose all my money. Oh, gracias, senor. Come on. Check the card game. Okay, I'll bet hands off the table. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come Thanks. All right, move around, everybody. If you're not shooting, get away from the table. Let the cutters in. All right, let the dice go. And he's coming out. Come on, dice, get hot. And he went away with a poor tray. It's not your night, bud. Next shooter. Come on, now, give me something on the field. You can't go wrong with the big six or the big eight, and don't overlook that ever loving any traps. It's overdue, men. 20, he don't hit. You got a bet, mister. Coming out. Uh-uh, the big miss, boxcars. All right, take the inside and pay the outside. Double up after craftsmen. One good one makes up for all the bad ones. You might as well be broke as not have enough. All right, here we go. Let the piece ride. I'm still saying you can't do it. Make him eat those words, mister. And another 20. There they go. And he's got nine for a number. He makes nine for all the money. Three to two, you can't do it. I'll take 50 to 25, I make it. No bad, it's a three to two wager. I'll cover that. All 
right, boys. Come on now, give me something on the field. And the shooter's coming out on a gravy train. Uh-oh, that devil jumped up. He went away with seven. Hank the inside, pay the outside. He wanted me to tell you when it was 10.30, fellow. All right, let the dice go. No more dice. dice. Good heart. Oh, and he went away with a four tray. Four tray, right. And we're coming out with a brand new shooter. Brand new. Don't overlook the field, men. Can't right, go wrong with a big six and a big eight. Get Get somebody give me something for that ever level no craps. It's overdue, men. Okay, let him go. Who's that guy just came? I don't know, some tourist way. Oh, no, it gives me the willies. He just don't smell right to me. So long, Diaz. What's your hurry, fella? Do you mind? For a guy who did all right, you seem to be in too much of a hurry. Is there a law against it? Maybe. Who sent you here, fella? Diaz, the cab driver. Okay, fella. Okay, wise guy. You found me, now what? What's eating you? You've been giving me the fish eye all night. You better see a doctor, Mac. You're in bad shape. I ain't that sick. Then stop imagining things. Get some rest. Downstairs to see you. Yeah. Look, you tell that guy. Now you and I are gonna have a little talk. You a cop? That's to teach you manners. I'm the guy that drove the florist truck. I don't know what you're talking about. Take a good look, Pete. You're looking into Patsy with his frame for the kill. You got the wrong guy. Lay off, will you? When you're ready to talk. You got me wrong. What'd you do with your cut, Pete? I don't follow you. You will. There's no money in there. You're one of them, weren't you? I don't know what you're talking about. Listen, this ain't my bag. I copped it out of a car. You're lying. Give me that. What's this plane ticket? This wire? What's so interesting in Baradas? So we start all over again. Go ahead. Go ahead. But I still don't know what you're talking about. If I can't open you up, maybe the cops can. Wait. No cops. So you were one of the gang. I, I had other reasons. I'm interested in this one. Your plane leaves in 50 minutes, Pete. You're not gonna be on it. Look, 
got to get the Barados. That wire means 300 grand to me. You're cut. Who set it up? I don't know. Look, we didn't have nothing against you. We didn't even know you. It just fell that way. Lucky me. Who else was in on it? I don't know that either. We, we all four of us wore masks. I thought there were only three. Three in the big guy. Look, look, I'm giving it to you straight. That's the way it was planned. We all did business with a mask. He could know us, but none of us could know him. Get it? None of us could squeal that way if one of us didn't get away. That explains everything but this. I, I, I won't know what that means till I get there. All right, partner. We'll find out together. Partner? The big man set me in on this, so we split five ways. <laughs> You're kidding. If I don't split five ways, there's going to be no split at all. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, hang yourself. It'll be a pleasure. All right. So I'm moving blind, but I got you for a bird dog to point the way as we go along. You forget. Even I don't know the big guy. So I'm taking a chance. But remember, I'm taking no chances with you between here and Barados, partner. Now get ready. We don't want to miss our plane. Give me some cigarettes. In the machine, senor. Passengers kindly board your plane to the local gateway. Flight 589 now loading. Flight 589 now loading. I want a ticket to Barados. Yes, sir. You just have time. You make connections for Barados in Mexico City. 10.30 a.m. Round trip? One way. It'll be $92, please. Hey, Bonnie, look who's here. Over by the cigarette machine. Familiar? That's Pete Harris. So it is. Go ahead, race him. Don't worry about this boy. You stay here. for a gun and he's clean. Don't worry, senor. This man's wanted for murder. <laughs> this little half. <laughs> oh, that dough. What's that he's trying to say about dough? What dough, Pete? You haven't got a chance, Pete, but you can go out clean. He's right, Pete. Tell us about the dough. Who's down here with you? What are you doing in Mexico? Where were you going? Got anything you want to tell us? You haven't got a chance. La policía enseguida. ¿Con quién hablo? Mande una ambulancia al aeropuerto inmediatamente. Is he trying to tell us that somebody's down here with him? Sounds like it. Maybe there is. The ambulance will be here at once. <laughs> Time's running out. Tell us who. Pete! Pete! Senor. You forgot your claim check, senor. Your baggage is aboard the plane. Muchísimas gracias. Buen viaje. Attention. Will Mr. Pete Harris please board the plane? Flight 589 now leaving.
Buenos dias, senores. Ah, good morning, my customers. Good morning. It looks like maybe today is going to rain finally. I hope so. At least it'll cool off. Then everyone can go outside and play. Buen dia, senor King. Well, now, senor Romano. I see you have found something you want. Perhaps you will like this one. Yeah, but... Don't you want to buy it? It's not bad for a bottle. How much? Only 11 American dollars. 11 bucks? But of course, senor, if you're looking for something cheap... I get nothing but the best. Then shall I wrap it into a nice package for you? Don't bother. I bought it for a nice package. Para mi? Que bueno. But, senor, you, you're too generous. That will be 11 American dollars. Charge it. With the rest. Si, senor. Gracias. <laughs> that Teresa, she's a jewel. The smartest girl that ever worked for me. That's the twelfth time she has sold that same bottle of perfume. On that kind of business, I can afford to give her 50% commission. Who is that, Vaseline? Came here yesterday. You mean to tell me you've been here two hours and not met Tony Romano? Come, I'll introduce you. Don't bother. Say, Tomas, why doesn't it rain if it's gonna? The one thing I have no control over, the rain. Yeah. The minute I get outside, though, it'll start coming down like cats and dogs. Good morning. Ah, Senor Foster. Good morning, Tommaso. What's everybody so gloomy about? The weather, Senor. She's so uncertain. Up in the States, they're having blizzards. Ah, oh, if something like that would only happen here. But no, nothing but sunshine and people catching fish. If just once a fish would catch a man, that's possible, Tommaso. All depends on the bait. <laughs> ah, Senor Foster, Senor Kane. How do you do, Mr. Kane? You look right at home here. Should be. Been coming down here every season for a good many years. Senor Foster, I have your tobacco for you. Oh, good, Teresa. I was almost out. Gracias. Mm -hmm. Good fishing. Thank you. Um, when are you going to try your hand at some of this fishing, Mr. Romano? In this heat? Uh-uh. I got better sport. How about some cards again tonight? I'll give you a chance to get even. Come early and bring a lot of money. Hiya, Tim. Glad to see you, Scott. Well, you're certainly looking in the pink. That little girl of yours, how is she? Oh, she's a big girl now. She's home preparing for her bar exams. Be a lawyer any day. It's been years since anyone's seen you around the old haunts. Yeah. Two years, one month, and eight days since I got my walking papers. Still bitter, Tim. You spend 20 years of your life being a cop and then get thrown out. What am I supposed to do, stand up and cheer? Well, maybe it was time to get out. It's beginning to affect your health. Uh, call it forced retirement. All right, Scott, forced retirement. You're back to the wrong party, Captain Foster. So now we've got ourselves a new boy. I call it a frame. Well, whatever it was, you've been through it. It'll only stir up old memories. Uh, how about that urgent telegram to meet you here? How far did you ever get on that Southwest Bank job? Exactly nowhere. You must be hearing plenty from the front office on that one. You don't know the half of it. Every bank in the country is on the alert to spot the serial number of those bills. And up to now, not one of them has turned up. How'd you like to crack that, John? How would I like to find oil in my backyard? I don't know, but I might be able to deliver that gang to you. You wouldn't fool an old friend, Tim. Might not be anything, and then again, it could be just what you're looking for. I've been watching a couple of strange characters drift in here, one at a time. Name Boyd Kane mean anything to you? Kane? Well, yeah, I want him for a jewelry store holdup. 
I knew that when I sent you the wire. Who else? A prize package by the name of Tony Romano. Should fit into a touch like that bank job. They're playing it like they don't know each other. But it's an old act any cop could spot, so I listened. Yeah, but there's supposed to be three of them. That's where it begins to make sense. The third one's due to arrive. That ties in. Anything else? The talk is about a money split. Big money. The kind that could have come out of that Southwest bank job. What a sweet break. They get together for a split and put their necks right into a noose. How do we handle it, Tim? Keep out of sight until I call you. You better line up the police. Where can I reach you? El Nacional. Thanks, Tim. Good. You, uh, any idea how much reward this will bring in? Well, it should be plenty. 25% of what the insurance companies stand to lose. And that's over a quarter of a million. That's a lot of money. And you're the cop they said was played out. if the senor wants to sign the register. Thanks. You are from Tijuana, Mexico, senor. I have a married sister living there. Yeah? Tomaso, déjeme a mí. Yo le sayo. Come with me, senor. I will show you which bungalow is yours. Follow me. I'll see you later. Thanks for the company. My pleasure. Souvenirs. You are here for fishing? I'm here for a vacation. That is good. Then you have come to the right place. Tell me, that fellow playing pool, who's he? Oh, he's... Wouldn't you like to buy something? You know, presents, souvenirs, things to send back home. Mm, maybe. Very special ladies' perfume. How about the fellow at the pool table? Oh, that is Senor Kane. He arrived this morning, but he's not very sociable. All the time, he's chewing bubble gum. <laughs> and the other fellow? Ah, you mean Sierra Romano? Now that one, he is very sociable. Thanks. Gracias, senor. Oh, senor. You won't forget about the souvenir. It's a vacation without souvenirs. Fisherman, what luck. Helen. For a minute, I thought you weren't glad to see me. Glad to see you. You know I'm always glad to see you, Punkin. But you come barging in here. What are you doing here? You, 
I thought you had a lot of studying to do. I've got news, Dad. Important news. There's nothing more important than your law exams. Sure there is. You are. That's why I'm here. You know, being a law student has its advantages. I set up a brief and brought it to the mayor myself. Mm, Sounds just like a lawyer. Let's have the facts. All right, Dad, facts. I got the commissioner to reopen your case. Well, don't you understand that? It's a chance for you to get back on the force. Forget it. It's too late. I don't want to get back on the force. Oh, now, look, Dad. This is your daughter, Helen. Don't fool me. I know what it's meant to you, being forced into retirement through politics. This is your chance to come back. You're not going to let pride get in the way. All right, Pumpkin. Thanks. Now you're going to turn right around and go home to those law books. Uh-uh. I'm taking a week's vacation with study. Besides, I kind of like a young man who just checked in. His name is Pete Harris. Our husbands. Fishing all day and sleeping all night. This is supposed to be our vacation. If they only stay awake. I wouldn't even mind if they play poker. Remember, Olsen, biggest sailfish I ever latched on to. Must have weighed 140 if he weighed a pound. Up ten. Just when I had him softened up, ready to land, the leader Look, breaks out. Right. right now, we're playing stud, remember? The man just boosted a ten. Oh, sorry. Beats me. Go ahead, deal. Oh. Try now draw me, huh? Maybe. You're high, bet your queens. Check to you. Check. 25. Just see you. Jack and Jill. Three fours. How do you like that guy? Souvenir, senor? Oh, senor Harris. Que tal? Come on over and take a hand. Sit down, I'll give you a stack of chips. Shall I deal you in? Looks like you're doing all right without me. Senor Harris, meet Senor Foster. He wins all the time. Senor Romano, he loses all the time. Senor Morelli, he worries more about fishing. <laughs> Glad to know you, gentlemen. Good morning. You don't let that boy scout look at Foster's fool you. He's had me on the hook ever since I've been here. He's dynamite. His daughter warned me about it. I promise to be careful. He hasn't learned a man should never press bad luck. Yeah. Expect to be around this tank a while? Well, I don't know. A while, maybe. Where are you from? Kansas City, originally. Used to know a girl there. Swell cook. You gonna bet that ace of yours? Uh, yeah. Five skins just to bring in the suckers. I'm in. Pilot. Uh by me. Let's make a ten to keep him out. See what I mean? I'll call. Looks like you've got yourself a pigeon. Always room for one more, Tony. Well, if you can cash me in, I think I owe you about ten dollars. You're not quitting so early. Sure. I thought I'd take a walk through the village before I turn in. Don't walk too fast. You'd be out of town without even seeing him. Then Dollar is right, Senor Harris. Come back some more. We need loser player. My good luck piece. Souvenir the biggest pot I ever sat in on. Don't let me break up the game. See you later, gentlemen. Good night. Good night,
What's the idea of tossing my joint? I didn't mean nothing. I figured you meant to give me the office when you dropped that card on the table. What's with you, chum? Look, I had to be sure before I cracked. Go on. It don't take no big thinking to figure a couple of guys like us ain't in this Bananaville on a vacation. Here. I'm just going for my wallet. My calling card. You must have been one of the guys in the van. Yeah. You were outside doing the driving. I'm uh, sorry I had to rough you up. No hard feelings. I'd have done the same in your spot. One will get you ten, I got the other guy uncovered, too. Who? Kane. Could be. Two more days and we'll be living it up. Just think. Over 300,000 smackers. If we get it. What do you mean, if? Let's not kid ourselves. We don't even know who he is. We wouldn't know where to find him if he didn't show up. But why would he bring us here if he ain't leveling? Search me. But I don't like working for someone I don't know. Especially if he can recognize me and I can't recognize him. Neither do I. How about this guy, Kane? Could he be Mr. Big? Are you kidding? That gum-chewing character? Could be an act. Yeah. Could be. You know, I think I'll get myself some Gum. Yeah. Gotcha. See. How'd you make up? A few more hands and your father would break me. <laughs> well, don't say I didn't warn you. It's all right. I'll get even tomorrow night. Now, that's one thing I don't understand about men. What's that? Well, you work hard all year and do nothing but talk about your vacation. Then when it comes, you sit indoors and play cards. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't figure, does it? A lot of things don't figure. Like, for instance? Well, for instance, what you do all year. I save up to play cards. <laughs> I guess I should have brought along a deck of cards instead of a swimming suit. Oh, I'd say you did the right thing. You can swim, too. <laughs> like you play cards. I'll tell you what, I'll meet you at the pool tomorrow morning. You teach me and I'll teach you. That's a deal. Thanks. Banana.
morning. Morning. Do you always bring a book along when you have a date? Well, it depends on the date. Let's see. Civil Code of the State of Missouri Rules and Procedure. Translation. I'm cramming for the bar exam. No cracks, please. Don't tell me you're opposed to the higher education of the female. No, it's uh, just that you don't look like a lawyer to me. Well, I found that people rarely look like what they are. Now, take yourself, for instance. To look at you, I'd say you were probably um, a fisherman. Instead, you're probably a um, salesman. Would you like it if I were a salesman? Oh, look, I'm the one that's supposed to get the answers by cross-examination. I've always heard that the best witnesses are the ones who, who want to answer. Well, thanks for the advice. I got some more for you, and for free, too. Always arrange to have your cases tried in front of all male juries. You can't lose, kid. <laughs> hey, you're beginning to sound promising again. I left my cigarettes up at the cabin. I'll be right back. Oh, Mr. Harris. Milkman? Iceman? some cards tonight. Oh, I can't. I got a dinner date with a lawyer. She may never get to be one if she's kept from her studies. She has to eat sometime. Why don't you join us? I'd like to. Good, I'll see you then. What he said, Palsy? Smart boy didn't hear you. What's the matter, Palsy? Your stuff. I think he hears you now. See? What is this? Smart boy here wants to know what is this. What's your line, mister? He knows. You read me for a sucker, palsy. I don't like that. You're crazy. I'll pinpoint it for you, chum. Pete Harris and me did a deuce together, Joliet. That makes you a phony. And now we're going to take a nice, quiet walk. When we 
we get to the right place, you're going to tell us a story of your life. I don't move. Yeah, make a noise. Bring the cops in on you. Smart boy wants it done quiet. Come in. Oh, pardon me. I didn't know you had visitors. That's all right. Come on in. Miss Foster, you know Mr. Romano? Mr. Kane. I've seen Mr. Romano around. How do you do, Mr. Kane? Hello. They were trying to talk me into taking a walk with them. I explained we had a date. Oh, I don't mind. I told them you wouldn't. Just a couple of nature lovers. We were chatting about it when you knocked. Well, it must have been a very warm discussion. Oh, uh, well, I just dropped in to return this to you. Thanks. I hardly missed it. I only carry it in case of snakes. We'll be seeing your hairs. Hey, Tony, I know a sure cure for a nosebleed. A cold knife in the middle of the back. Nice guys. Playful. Don't bother making up any stories for me. I thought the law said a man was innocent until proven guilty. That's right. Considering the circumstantial evidence, if you were my attorney, how would you advise me to answer? I'd tell you not to answer at all, unless you could answer honestly. It might incriminate you. Now you're giving me some good advice. Thanks. And for free. Oh, Senor Kane, I have been looking for you. I have a letter for you. She smells like a business one. La cucaracha, la cucaracha, 
La cucaracha ya no puede caminar, le falta que la mentire. Cucaracha, diriririrar. Buenas tardes, my customers, buenas tardes. Ah, señor Romano, a letter for you. This one, she also smells like a business one. <laughs> A letter for you, Senor Eric. Oh, thanks. You're very welcome. Excuse me. Mail from home. It'll wait. I expect you to get in some solid study tonight. Well, isn't that nice of you? How's that, Mr. Foster? Thanks for that and the dinner. Don't forget, I may ask questions tomorrow. Well, I'll look forward to it. Good night. Tony, you're not even looking at how pretty they are. And only 11 American dollars. Everything around here is 11 bucks. Tony, you lie? Charge it with the rest. Right. Tony. See you later. I see you got your invitation, Tony. Yeah. How about your friend out there? He get his, too? Let's go ask him. Parkin? It isn't often I butt into your affairs, but I'm gonna make like a father. You sound serious. Well, you're concerned, I'm always serious. I want you to forget that fellow. But you don't know anything about him, Dad. Neither do you. Right in there. Where? <laughs> Tells you. Get the You know well. Do it. The gun came. Don't. Don't. I, I get rid Go of on. It. Drop it. Drop it. Don't. Don't shoot. Drop it. In the well. Do what he tells you. Don't shoot! In the well. Do it. Get rid of it. All right, you two knuckleheads. Now you're gonna listen to me. Unless you want to join the guns in the well. I got my invitation to the party. I take Pete Harris here. You gave Harris the double shuffle. You got it wrong, pal. The cops paid him off in full. Like gambling. A man puts up his bet, he's entitled to be paid off if he wins. Harris lost. What did you put up? A possible 20 years in stir. You're looking at the guy who was framed for the job. That's why I'm cutting myself in, whether you like it or not. You're smart. You'll play along with me. You're not. It goes rough on everybody. Talk awfully green for a smart guy. What happens when Mr. Big sees you? Let's wait till we get to that, huh? Now, you two boys make like friends. Go to sleep. Go on. And in case you get any ideas about visiting me later, forget it. I sleep light.
you doing here? Simple. I came looking for you. It's a matter of principle, Mr. Harris. I just don't like anybody running out on me twice in the same day. Oh, I see. Well, you see, after I got the letter... I, I... told you, you didn't have to make up any stories for me. That's right, you did. Look, Pete, I know I may be butting into something I shouldn't, but that's the way I am. Even when I was a kid, I was always the one asking questions. Bet you even cross-examined your nurse, huh? <laughs> you know, if I were smart, I'd find myself another date and forget all about you. Only I can't help feeling you're in trouble. I liked it better this afternoon when you stopped asking questions. I'm no fool, Pete. I've been around cops long enough to pick up a few tricks of the trade. Those playmates of yours are pretty obvious. What have they got on you? One question at a time. Especially in cuffs. Where'd you pick that up? Well, my father's a retired captain of police. Oh, I see. That explains your being a lawyer. Papa nails them and you free him, is oh, that it? What's that got to Look, do with it? Look, you're a nice girl, but in case you're thinking of mothering me, forget it. I'm no stray dog you can pick up, and I like my neck without a collar. Now get lost. Now I'm supposed to be hurt. Maybe even cry. But I won't. I think you're in trouble, and I'm going to help you. Listen, sister. Forget it. Mind your own business. Scott? Yeah. Let me check back. They meet out on the boat tomorrow at dawn for the split. I wait out on the police boat for your light signal, then I move in. And you answer my signal first. Right. Scott? Yeah. Don't miss. Don't worry. I won't. Sleep by this time. I've been waiting for you, Dad. Had a little problem? Yeah. Used to happen pretty often when you were younger. I always knew when something was troubling you. <laughs> Matter of fact, kind of miss it. Were they very tough problems I used to bring to you, Dad? Oh, very tough. Some new trinket you wanted, and money for the movies. That time you get into your first form when your boat came down with the measles. <laughs> that was a tough one. Finally had to take you out myself that night. <laughs> Once you even wanted to know when we'd get your new ma to look after you. Oh, that was a real tough one. Most of them know we were able to work out. You were right about Harris, Dad. He's in a jam. Oh, I forgot to tell you, you used to take my advice. In those days, you wouldn't have gone running after him if I'd asked you not to. I want you to help him, Dad. That way you'll be helping me. Why? Professional interest? I don't really know, Dad. Something's happened. Well, I know it sounds crazy and illogical, but that's the way it is. He's out of bounds for you, Helen. Way out of bounds. You said that before. Why? Isn't it enough that I tell you? Not this time. All right. He's an ex-con. I just didn't want to hit you over the head with it. 
What else do you know about him? Isn't that enough? No, it's not. There's more. There's got to be more. You wouldn't be so positive if there weren't something... What else have you got against him? You're going home tonight, young lady. Is that the way you solved my problems when I was a kid? This is for your own good. Is it? Believe me. Believe me, Pumpkin. Go home and forget him. You, you can start the ball rolling on that rehearing, and I'll be... Helen! Good morning, pals. He's holding. Never learn, will you? Good morning. Don't tell me you boys are going fishing, too. Yeah, we well, see you get such a kick out of it, we decided to give it a try. It's a great sport. I'm on my way to the pier. Can I give you a lift? You got yourself a passenger. Might as well take us all, seeing as the three of us are going fishing. Oh, did you rent a boat? Well, we got us a boat called the Manana. You're an ex-captain of police, Mr. Foster. Oh, that was a long time ago. Hey, we'll be able to match fish stories tonight, huh? Sure, I'll bring pictures.
call it. I'll go see if he's still there. What's the matter, pals? You run out of talk? Not quite. I got a proposition. I know where the money is. Right here on the boat. I'll show you. Look for yourself. Right in the cupboard there. Go ahead, look. A million two hundred thousand dollars, Tony. Think of it, a million two. For you and me. Why cut the take four ways when we only have to cut it two? It's over a half a million apiece. Over half a million. Why split with Kane? Okay, don't. <laughs> two-way split. A guy living big all the time like me needs dough. So long, sucker. Stop it, Tony. Right in front of you. Kick it over here. Move back. Back up. I don't get it. You will. Let's just take it easy till the police get here. Little falling out over the split. You get around a lot for a fisherman. Part of my job. Ex-cop. Making out like he knows from nothing. All depends on what the assignment calls for. You never had a chance. We had the big guy from the beginning. Don't let that bother you, Tony. It was all marked anyway. We should have figured that. That's right, Joe. The name is Pete. Uh. Like in Pete Harris, who was shot and killed in Tijuana? Something bothering you, Joe? Yeah. The only person who would know Pete Harris was in Tijuana would be the one who sent him there to hide out, and wait for a wire. You're a boy with a lot of ideas. Sure. Like only a cop would know you couldn't use a million two in hot cash, but you could trade it in for a nice, clean reward. Got it all figured out. Uh huh? Three little patsies, one down, two to go. You're being there to give us a lift, the money on a platter. Honey for the bees, huh, Captain Foster? Stay where you are. Sure, sure. We'll wait till the cops arrive. Try my story on for size. If I'm wrong, I'll apologize.
luck had to give out sometime. I wouldn't mind so much, Joe, if Helen didn't have to find out. You're not part of this. You got a break coming. Tim, what's happened? Are you hurt? What's Rolf doing here? I've been saving him. Surprise for you. It was his lead turned the trick. Only it didn't come off the way we planned it. Did it, Joe? was Pete Harrison, burned down in Tijuana. Scott, if anybody deserves a reward, it's him. Let's get him to a doctor. Well, give her my love, Joe. Thanks. I know it's just talk now, Helen, but I feel the loss of your father as keenly as you do. I owe him a lot for what he did. And if there's anything that you ever need, will you call on me? Thanks, Mr. Andrews. Oh, and one other thing about Joe Rolfe. He's a fine boy. That scrape he got into a long time ago, he's more than made up for it. And the way I feel, my company will underwrite him any time. I tried so hard to make Dad understand. You did, Helen. The last thing he said was for Joe to give you his love. How is she taking it, Mr. Andrews? Pretty good, Joe. She's had time to get over the shock. But a hero's medal isn't enough when you're alone. She and Dad were pretty close. Hmm? I told her about you. What'd she say? Why don't you ask her? <laughs> 